Okay, welcome to another video. So Manjaro have just released the latest stable version of their distribution, bringing us up to Manjaro Linux 20.1 Mika, or Mica, however you're meant to be pronouncing it. So what we're going to do in today's video is install it natively to this laptop and just give a very quick first look of the KDE version. So we're in the live ISO right now, which is around about 3 GB in size. And we're going to go ahead with the installer, which is of course Calamares. So British English is our language. Europe, London is our zone, and UK is the keyboard. Let's just double check that that is all good. It is indeed, so we're going to go next. Okay, we're going to use their straight erase disk and see how it sets up its partitions. And we can do a swap with Hibernate in Manjaro, which is always handy because I like to test these out in videos. So we're going to go swap with Hibernate, and that's going to give us one EF5 300 MB, a swap partition of 17.1 GB, which is going to be large enough to enable suspend to disk with hibernation, and then the rest is going to be on root at 221 GB EXT4. So we're going to go next, and we're going to do our user accounts. So we're going to call this Lappy like we always do on the laptop, and password, and we're going to use the same password for the administrator and log in automatically. Okay, so we get a choice of what Office Suite we might want to use out of LibreOffice, FreeOffice, or NoOffice. So we're going to go for LibreOffice because I want to check out what version it's actually going to install, bearing in mind we now have version 7 that is currently out. So we're going to go next and just review those options so it all looks good to me. And we're going to click Install. And I'm just going to get my stopwatch ready because as soon as we press Install now, we are going to start the timer to see how long this takes to install. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here and I'll be back once this is finished. Okay, we have finished installation already, so that was super quick. It might even be one of the fastest ones I've actually had on the channel in the past couple of months, coming in at 1 minute and 49 seconds. So what we're going to do now is restart and boot into our freshly installed Manjaro KDE Plasma desktop. Okay, so here we are at our desktop. What we're going to do very quickly is use the welcome screen here just to quickly glance at the release info. We won't go for everything, just stuff that applies to this KDE version. So, of course, XFC remains their flagship offering, but we want this little part right about here. So our KDE edition is the powerful, mature and feature-rich Plasma 5.19 desktop with a unique look and feel, which has had a complete redesign in spring of 2020. The full set of Breath 2 themes includes light and dark versions, a new animated splash screen, which we will show, I did briefly see it when we started up, console profiles, Yakwake skins and many more little details. We have rounded off the text editor Kate with some additional colour schemes and offer Plasma's simple menu as an alternative to the traditional kickoff launcher. Okay, we'll take a look at that. With a wide selection of the latest KDE apps, 20.08 and other applications, Manjaro KDE aims to be a versatile and elegant environment ready for all of your everyday needs. So Pamax 9.5 series has received a few updates. We've optimized internal check depth algorithm for smarter performance, enhanced the error handling, optimized internal search algorithm for better regex support and applied database performance improvements. We also now build AUR packages and install as much of them as possible in a single run. Manjaro Architect also supports ZFS installation by providing the kernel modules, which is very cool. So it uses kernel 5.8 for this release, but I do believe there are images of 5.4, the LTS version. So with that out of the way, what we're going to do then is start with just the overall desktop and give a bit of an overview. So in our system tray at the bottom here, of course, we have our clock connections. And then we have a little icon for the drop down terminal, which you can press that and then that will bring down your terminal. But we also have a shortcut key, which is F12 by default. So let's just test that one out. Perfect. And then we have our PAMAC manager there, which will get us up to our add and remove software. And of course, we can also enable the AUR. So let's go to preferences, type in our password. And here's where you can access some settings and preferences. So AUR is disabled by default. So we're going to go ahead and enable that. And you can also manage snap and flat pack settings in here. But when I'm on Arch, I tend not to really need any of that. So we're going to leave that disabled and just stick to the AUR. Very nice. So next up is your notifications, and it's on do not disturb by default. We then have the sort of Manjaro settings where you can get into the kernel, language packs, and options. So let's just jump into the kernels, 
and as you can see we are currently running the 5.8.6.1 and then we could also install the LTS version of 5.4 very handy so then we also have is that a trash can yeah so weird icon for your waste bin there but we also have a waste bin there and then just the show desktop button now a load of space and then we get to a couple of pinned applications which is Dolphin and Firefox and of course we can change this from the icon task list view to the task manager or windows list so that now brings us to the application launcher and i do want to check out these new menus that they have implemented so let's right click on that or two finger tap and go to show alternatives so we have application dashboard application launcher application menu and the new one here which is simple menu so let's quickly test that out so before we switch this is what it looks like by default and now let's switch over to the simple version so let's go to show alternatives and go to simple menu and switch now let's see what that looks like oh yes i know this one i quite like this so of course you can go through all of your applications in this view here by going through these little dots there and we have a search bar at the top and then you have your application categories to the right and then you have some power off buttons and lock screens etc just above them so I did also see it does have the um, full screen application launcher if that's more your kind of thing. I'm not a huge fan of full screen application launchers on desktops unless I've got a touch screen to use to make it a bit more worthwhile. But here you have your favourites, applications which are your recents and then you can go all through and it also has your recent documents there as well. And you can jump into your widgets as well as your applications. So what we're going to do is put it back onto the simple menu and we're going to use that for the duration of this video. So let's go back to show alternatives and go to simple menu. I do actually really like the simple menu so it's good to see that included. So applications wise we won't spend too much time on here. We're going to start with development, so QT assistant, designer, linguist and debus stuff. Education, you're going to see a LibreOffice thing there because we did choose to install LibreOffice. We'll double check what version that has installed. So it has Steam installed out of the box, which is nice to see. I think it has done for quite a while, actually, if I remember right. And then in graphics, we have Gwenview, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular and Scanlight. In Internet, Firefox is and remains your default web browser. And you, of course, have KDE Connect for all your Android sort of syncing across your network. And then we have KGET. Conversation, Qubit Torrent is your torrent client as well as you've got Thunderbird as your default email client. So in multimedia we have Cantata which is a program I'm not too familiar with but I think it's a music player which has some sort of server capabilities in it as well. So as you can see we could do a standard multi-server setup or just go straight into a basic setup for a single user and then choose your music folder there which is going to be defaulted to your music folder in home. So we can fetch missing covers and save downloaded covers into music folder. And let's finish that and see what the main screen actually looks like. Okay, a very simple layout. We've got two panels here with some links to the left with folder, library, playlists, internet devices and a search. You then have your play and skip buttons and a seek finder here. And then you have a little volume sort of slider where you can click to change your volume. Nice. Right. So let's see if there's anything else in here that I want to take a look at before we oh okay before we get to what i've just seen let's check out what version of LibreOffice we are running okay so it's the old splash screen so it's going to be a series six of some sort so let's just double check which version this exactly is so let's go to help and about and let's just see there there we go so you can see the version number is 6.4.6.2 so quite an older version now but you can quite easily go ahead and install the version that is the most recent which is version 7.0 something so let's get out of that right i did just see something that made me quite happy to see there i didn't know this was a feature that was included in manjaro so as you can see here we have the add and remove for pat map manager we have manjaro notifications and manjaro settings software update and system settings but what's caught my eye is the inclusion of app image launcher so if you've seen any of my videos before you know i'm quite a fan of app images it's probably my favorite universal packaging format out of the free so you've got the big two flat pack and snap but the one that doesn't get as much love is app image launcher or just app images and including app image launcher out of the box is quite handy for people that don't quite know how to integrate app images into their system so we will demo that in just a moment very cool to see that they are supporting that though so they're supporting all three of the formats so that's snap flat pack and app image very nice to see okay so let's see what else we got so that was in settings 
So let's finish it off in system and then utilities. So system, standard stuff there, you have your KSIS guard, Manjaro Hello. So it does have HTOP installed out of the box. It has time shift as well for system snapshots. As we're on EXT4, we'll be using rsync. We then have software update our KDE partition manager. So I'm just gonna quickly check what HTOP is saying right now. So we're currently eating up at about 860, 826 megabytes of RAM. CPU looks pretty decent to be fair on single digits on each thread. And of course we have that large enough swap to enable hibernation, which we will test in just a moment. Okay, so before we have a look at the app image integration, let's check out the theming. So let's go into global theme. And they have the theme breath two, which is a theme I've not actually seen before. So there's breath two. So let's open up Dolphin and see what it looks like with this theme applied. Okay, it doesn't look too dissimilar from their other theme that they used to use. Was it Matcha or something? So you've got the greens there as well, and then the sort of the light greys and dark greys on the Windows title bar there. So while we're here, let's grab a new theme. Let's get Layen. Oh, we need to click Get New Themes first, Tyler. And we'll also get the Cavantum theme for it as well. In fact, I'm not going to do that yet. I'll do that after a fresh reboot before I install stuff because I want to see how much RAM we're using at boot. So we'll do that in a moment. Okay, and let's just see what these icons are. So we are using the Breath 2 icon pack as well, and they also have the dark variation there, as well as the Breeze, Gnome, Oxygen, and Adwater theming. Okay, I really want to check out the app image launcher. So we're going to use Caden Live. I know we were on KD, so we could just install it. But I want to test out the app image launcher integration and show you how that all works. So let's go to Caden Live. And what's good about Caden Live is they have official images of their app image of the latest version 20.08.1. So let's go to download and grab this app image here. So we'll get a dialogue and straight away you can just open it in app image launcher. And what that will do is it will integrate in your system, create a dot desktop file in home dot share dot application uh, dot local dot share applications. And it will also move the app image into applications in your home folder. So let's just see the settings by default here. So if we go into here. As you can see, you could change the locations if you wanted, but by default, it's best just to leave it like that. So it also has the updater available for app images that support it. So what we're gonna do is press open with app image launcher and click okay. Now it's gonna give you this dialog and you can sort of uncheck things or customize it as you do, but it's best to leave it on the default set unless you have a folder where you prefer it to store things. So what we're gonna do is click okay. And now we're gonna integrate and run and that's gonna run it's going to open the program whilst integrating it into our system so it can be pinned to launchers and we'll also be able to find it in our application launcher here. So as you can see, here's Caden Live 20.08.1. We can pin this icon to our taskbar like so. And then we can also find it in our application launcher. So if we type in Caden Live, okay, so it hasn't done the icon correct, but it's also in multimedia. Now, whenever this happens and it doesn't get the right icon, it should do nine times out of 10. But just to be on the safe side, what I tend to do is actually make my own .desktop files. But for this sake, we're just gonna edit the one it's created. So let's go to home, show hidden files. And what I'll do is move this into the center and we can see it a bit better. Right, so we wanna go to .local, which is gonna be right about there. We wanna go into share applications and as you can see there's that Caden Live desktop file so what we're going to do is open it with Kate and we're going to go all the way down to the icon line so let's just get that out of the way there we go so I can see what it's done there so what we're going to do is replace all of this oh touchpad's doing me doing me a mischief there where are we gone there we go so what we're going to do is replace this whole line We've just simply Caden Live. We're now going to save that. And what that's now going to do is pull the correct icon no matter what theme you're on. So if we go back into our launcher, into multimedia, and as you can see, it has applied the correct icon theme there. So you shouldn't really need to do that with most applications, but if you do, it's quite a simple fix there. Okay, what we're going to do now is test out the hibernation. So let's open up a few programs. So let's open up this and let's snap it side by side with Firefox. So we can just drag and drop it. And now let's snap that to that side and we're going to test out hibernation. So do we have a GUI way of doing it? Let's have a look. 
So let's press the power button here. Okay, so we don't have the Hibernate option in the actual GUI here, so we're going to do it in the terminal. So let's open up the drop down terminal with our, um, F12, that's it, and system CTL hibernate. Oh, hibernate. Hibernate. Okay, what I'm going to do is press enter. I'm going to pause the video here while the laptop goes into a low power state, and then hopefully when we return, it will resume from hibernate and all of this applications will be on the screen. Okay, so we've just rebooted and been landed at the lock screen. So we're going to type in our password, and if everything's gone correct, all of those applications, which was Files, um, Dolphin, and Firefox, will be right where we left them. I think we've done our password wrong. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Let's do that again. Okay, perfect. So hibernation worked absolutely fine, and it didn't take long to actually get into the hibernate state. So that is absolutely perfect. Okay, what we're going to do now is do a fresh reboot so we can check out the new splash loading screen. We're going to get a RAM reading and we might apply a different theme and just wrap it up there. Okay, there's our new splash animated loaded screen there and we are back at our desktop. So let's quickly jump into a terminal and open up HDOP. Nice, so it's at about 630 megabytes of RAM at boot. CPU threads are looking pretty decent, all on about 1%. And it should sort of be stable at about 630. So you're going to say 630 to about maybe 650 at boot before you go crazy installing a load of stuff. So let's just install a different theme there and then wrap it up there. Okay, we've managed to apply our theming and we've also gone for a nice little icon theme of the Teller icons but the circle variation. So we have Teller Circle. So all in all, it looks pretty nice together, especially with the Covantum theme applied. So you get some nice transparency in your Dolphin window. That's been Manjaro 20.01 Mika. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.